So welcome back to our nuclear uh, internal on atomic and nuclear physics for level two NCA. Uh, this is our last lesson uh, today looking at nuclear power, which is going to be an extension of the nuclear fission and fusion uh, presentation, uh, which was in the previous video. Okay, so in order to understand why nuclear power is so effective as a fuel, you need to understand concepts around uh, specific energy and energy density. Okay, so specific energy is basically the energy released from a substance uh, per unit mass or joules per kilogram, whereas energy density is going to be energy per unit volume or joules per meters cubed. Okay, so in terms of energy density, uh, looking at different ways that we get uh, energy, like eating a sandwich or getting coal or uh, petrol for your vehicle, you can clearly see that uranium uh, releases the most energy per kilogram and also the most energy per meters cubed by a large margin. But you've also got to consider uh, about storage uh, and also transport. Um, so that also becomes a uh, factors that you have to put into the calculation when you're considering what's the best energy source to use. So from our previous presentation, uh, we looked at nuclear fission, okay, which is the uh, nuclear uh, process that is used in nuclear power plants. So with that, a uh, slow-moving neutron basically uh, collides into an isotope of uranium, uranium-235. This creates an unstable isotope of uranium-236, which then breaks down into two daughter nuclei of barium and krypton, and also releases gamma radiation uh, energy, uh, due to that binding energy, and also three neutrons. Okay, and those three neutrons can then go on and therefore uh, cause the um, fission of adjacent uranium-235 uh, atoms in the form of a chain reaction. And in bombs, that's kind of what we want, but for nuclear power, we don't want a chain reaction. We kind of want our nuclear power station to be sustainable and not blow up within the first uh, 10 seconds. So in this uh, video, we will also look at ways that the chain reaction is controlled in a power station. So the primary source of the energy, as we've seen uh, in the nuclear power station, is uranium. Now most of the uranium is found in the form of an isotope of uranium-238 in the form of a ore, okay, which you mine out. It's basically an oxide of the uranium. And so 99.3% of that uh, ore is going to be in the form of uranium-238, and only 07 is going to be in the one we want, uranium-235, which we need for nuclear fission. And most of the uranium comes from the former Soviet republics, Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan, as well as Russia itself, and also Canada and Australia have quite large stockpiles in terms of their mining as well. So it's usually in the form of yellow cake. So that's basically the milling and refining of the uh, uranium ore you get out of the ground. It looks like that yellow, that's hence, hence why it's called yellow cake, and it's an oxide of uranium. And again, 99.3% of that is in the form of uranium-238. We want uranium-235 though. So how do we get uranium-235? We go through a process of uranium enrichment. Okay, so the yellow cake is first converted uh, into the gas uranium hexafluoride. Okay, which is then centrifuged off with the uh, heavier isotope 238 coming off first, and then you've got that uranium 235 coming off second. So, therefore, you can increase the percentage of uranium 235 isotope in your yellow cake. Okay, it just enriches it up. And then we use laser en enrichment uh, to get it to highly enriched uranium. Okay, so in terms of uranium enrichment, uh, out of the ground, the raw ore is about 0.7% uranium-235. The centrifuge gets about fuel grade. Okay, so about 3.5% fuel grade is what we use in the um, nuclear power stations. And nuclear weapons require highly enriched uranium of about 90%. Okay. Hence why centrifuge is used by the Iranians. And what happens is that uranium-235 is made into fuel rods, which are then placed into the reactor. Okay, there's, there's some pictures of, of the uranium fuel rods. Now, in terms of the nuclear power plant, what you have is uranium fuel rods uh, basically go into the reactor there, okay, in which cold water has been pumped through. The nuclear fission reaction occurs, which heats the water, okay, that goes through a turbine, 
which then goes through an electrical generator, which then goes off to uh, the, your home, basically, uh, in the form of electricity. Okay, and the, the waste warm condenser water then goes into the water towers to be cooled. Okay, so usually you see that with nuclear power stations. What is that coming out in the atmosphere? That's just uh, steam, basically. And then that cold water is then recycled, going back into the reactor, and the process begins again. However, as mentioned before, uh, if not controlled, you'll end up with a chain reaction. We don't really want that. Okay, so... What's one of the reasons why, in terms of the fuel rods, only about 4% of the uh, rods is actually going to be made of uranium-235. And the neutrons have been slowed down, usually by the water, so they can be captured by the uranium-235 atom. Another point is that uh, two more kites of rods are also incorporated uh, into the reactor. Okay, you've got the moderator rods, which are either just straight water, okay or graphite rods okay so graphite rods what they do is they slow down the reaction okay so the incident in chernobyl was that they had a lot of moderator rods but unfortunately the reaction had gone critical and it wasn't able to slow it down sufficiently and then we also have the control rods uh, which are usually made of boron hence more expensive hence why the russians didn't use them in chernobyl uh, which actually absorbs the neutrons and actually shuts down the chain reaction. Okay, so that, that ends the, the process of uh, nuclear fission. So in terms of the chain reaction, uh, you don't want uh, the neutrons to go off and hit uranium-235 adjacent uh, too much, because then it's too fast. You can't control uh, the rate of the nuclear fission. The uh, moderator rods um, slow it down, okay, uh, and... As mentioned, the control rods, which are made of boron, slow that completely shut down the process because they absorb the neutrons, so they can't actually interact with any more adjacent uranium-235 isotopes. So the major problem with uh, nuclear um, power plants is the fact you've got nuclear waste. Okay, So you've got um, a whole range of different isotopes that are formed, some lasting for 15.7 million years. So you need to be able to store them in a safe place, okay? Because if they uh, get out, then they're going to cause, um, obviously, uh, radioactive poisoning. So uh, most of the waste is stored on site uh, in nuclear power plants. Uh, so for example, the Japanese power plants. But they get sent overseas. Okay, the Japanese send it to Australia, for example, um, because G Australia's deserts. Uh, you can dig a hole in there. There's no earthquakes. It's rather stable uh, geographically. Uh, so you can store nuclear waste underground there. And here's an example in the States. They do the same there with Yucca Mountain, okay, which is geographically stable. They just store it underneath the mountain. Um, are there any better options out there? Uh, well, you could potentially uh, send them off to space, I guess, in a rocket. Uh, Elon Musk uh, would be helping with that. Uh, but also the smaller scale reactions, the small modular reactors, uh, create, create less rat waste. So it takes more time for that waste to build up. Anyway, that's kind of a, a summary of uh, nuclear power. And that's kind of the end of the internal. So hopefully you've got enough information to go forward and write those essays. <laughs>